Welcome back. Today we're going to do the simplest fly in history. It's called the Stack Blonde. And the Stack Blonde is my tribute to Joe Brooks' original Platinum Blonde uh, in the 50s. Uh, he did it in a whole bunch of stuff, different colors, and uh, but it was done on an Atlantic salmon hook. And I'll show a picture of it in a minute. It's in the back. It's in the I think it's on page 68 of Trout in Joe Brooks's book. I can't remember the page, but I think that's it. But it, I could never tie it well. And so I tried it, you know, just different ways. And I was, that's when I still lived in Michigan. And <clears throat> I actually thought that I kind of came up with this myself. And it, went, it was in the first Modern Streamers book. And, and then all of a sudden I'm rummaging around in my fly tying room. And I came up with this fly right here. And I realized that even though I was the first one to put it on a keel hook, this was Walt Grout. And, and if you've watched a, my stuff a, a lot, you'll know that I've talked about Walt a lot because he's one of the most innovative tires I've ever known in my life. And, and always light your ahead of himself. And, but he was a cheap bastard and he wouldn't, he wouldn't buy one of these hooks. He bent this hook. I remember him doing it. We lived together when we were steelhead guiding. And he bent this hook. You can see it's a downturned eye and he took and what he did is he wanted to we were it was fall steelhead i think i can't remember but a lot of guys were throwing fire tiger plugs and he wanted a, a fly that looked like that that same color combo so he he bent this hook and then he stacked this i lost that thing it was in my fly tie i stole it from him i'm sure i i lost that thing and i kept trying to tie the stack blonde and it just i, I just never could get it look like the one in the picture and there's this hook company called the Keel Fly Hook. Uh, it was Dick Popes did this hook. It was designed uh, in Michigan. And then it was essentially, I think originally it was tied for a dry fly. It was so you could set things on in wood. But you can see the bend of this hook. And uh, Dorothy Schramm gave me these. I, I, they, they, even though I grew up in Traverse City, and uh, Burke Flexler built these hooks forever. And so I, I just, I had a bunch of them around, but... I tried the dry fly thing, it didn't work for me. They didn't, they just didn't work right. And so then I got some of the bigger ones like this, the big, the bigger hooks, but they quit making these things. But anyway, any rate, back to this fly, I couldn't tie it well. So uh, on the original Atlantic salmon style hook. So I took one of these and I just put it in here and I stacked it three times. And so I would get this big profile, you know, the, the wider profiles like that thinking that I'd come up with this genius idea when, in fact, I stole it from Walt and I for, forgot about it, but uh, that's all right. He, he's not mad, I don't think. But at any rate, uh, this is more, this hook style, it, it's so easy to tie. This fly is, it is the lightest fly. I don't care what fly you've ever thrown. You can't feel this on the end of your line. You can throw this thing forever. And you can see this one here, this is just a, a morphed version on the bigger ones. This has got the deceiver style tail. The original's here. It's just, this isn't the original. This is on a different hook. So, so they quit making the keel hooks. And so I wanted these things still and I couldn't get them. And I, you know, I, I bought every hook I could find on the planet. And then this one comes out, or I mean, it, we run out of hooks. And so uh, when one of the companies was doing my, when Rainey's was doing my fly, we started doing them on a worm hook. It wasn't as good, but it was, we, we got it. And the thing is about this fly is it's, you can do it. You can see I've got three different colors here. There's just chartreuse white. I've done it in a bajillion colors. This was back, way back when. This was when uh, I still lived in Michigan. This was one of the original flapper to You see it's on 30 pound mono and it's got, you know, there, there's the keel hook. And the idea was to get, almost like get schoolies, right? It was uh, way back. And then, and all the, all the, uh, like this is a little perch, you know, the original, these are the belly bumpers that we did, you know, originally on this new hook. And so it's morphed into a million ways, but I honestly, honestly, I don't think the, the original one I'm going to do, I don't think it's ever been improved. I don't think it's better. I, I, and these look fun. I mean, doing this, we're doing these little perch today, you know, just so we can do a little perch minnows and, uh, there's a lot of ways to play around with it, but I, I really, truly don't think that you can improve on the original bucktail just with pure bucktail. Like I said, I did these here for the white. I'm, I'm leaving in a couple of days to go down to the white. And they're just bigger versions with, with feathers in them. 
I don't, I don't anticipate. They just made the fly a little bigger. You can't get bucktail that long. So they just made the fly a little bigger. I do not anticipate those ever outfishing the one we're going to do today. So it's, it's super simple. The grand total of materials is this and one plume of marabou. And so we're going to use a bucktail. We're going to use, uh, I dropped my marabou down there somewhere. It's over there. We're going to have some bucktail. We're going to have a single thing of back in the picture. Sorry, forgot that. We're going to have marabou. That's just a cover. The original one never had it on it. I'm going to show you where I stopped on the original. And again, I, I really don't believe you can outfish that thing. You do it in white. You can do it any color you want. But uh, yellow was the first one. I, all I ever did it in actually was yellow and white forever. And then I started two-toning it. And again, don't think it ever fixed anything. The hook I'm going to use today is the, uh, the 7055, the belly bumper hook uh, right there. You've seen that. I've got this video too. I've got a belly bumper, you know, another fly that I do that with. But just the 7055, we're going to do it on a size 2 because that was the size, that was the saltwater size. Probably, they're almost identical in, in length. Uh, that was pretty quick, you won't see it, but uh, it's almost identical. And so it's a, just a super simple fly. But what you got to look for when you're going to do it, and, and by the way, you could do this down to, what I do with that? You could do this down to a much smaller fly using a hook uh, a half inch, three quarters of an inch smaller than this. And just, you know, the belly bumper comes down to, you know, hook about, uh, was a size four. I mean, so, and it's, it's probably that much shorter, but, and, and again, I like, I like the bigger profile, but I always have some of the smaller ones too. Just, you know, big isn't always the best. It's just, I'm doing the bigger ones up right now, just cause I'm going to big water in a week and it's, I, I want a little bit more, but I'll always have some of these small ones too. And bucktail's a, bucktail's a really cool material. I don't think there's anything that swims any better. I don't think there's anything that's more fishy. I don't care what synthetics we get. It's just, this stuff just is tried and true. It'll never, it just never goes out of style. But it, you do have to find the right size tail. So, and, and there's just no way other than calling some, you know, call us, we'll try to pick the biggest ones. If you, if you walk into the fly shop, look at them, and just and pull the hair down to the side like this so you can see how long it is and if you got quality hair. You don't want to have, it, it's going to take a pretty good four or five inch piece of this stuff to work well. And so just make sure it's long enough. You're going to burn through some of it. I've already started cutting on this one. I generally go down in here on the sides and I just kind of start looking and I pull it off like this to the side and making sure that the hairs are the same length on the end. So I just kind of pull it off to the side and everything's good. But again, this thing is kind of a, it's a, you're going to stack three, four, and, and, and you'll adapt that to however you want. So it's not that critical that the hairs, I like the long hair and I like the tips to be the, the same length, but you're going to end up with three more stacks in here. So you're going to get plenty of room and it's going to, you know, you're going to end up and, you're, and it's going to swim like, oh man, these things swim like crazy. I'm congested. I'm off the coffee train and onto the tea train because Johnny says I talk too much. <laughs> wow. The number of comments I'm going to get on that one. It's unreal. So we're going to put this in here. I like the hair to start out and we're going to go on the top of the hook. Uh, I like it to start out twice the length of the hook basically. So you can see here, there's the longest hairs come up in there and I'm about two times the length of the hook. I'm going to cut this in a kind of a long angle and by the way if if this black hook back here bothers you and I used to do this on mine I would I would mylar that up to here but after this this is all going to be covered with thread so if that bothers you if you want to throw some mylar back there you want to throw some mylar in it that's fine too it won't make it fish any better but you can and so and they don't mind that at all so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to build a little bit of bulk I've already tapered that I'm building a little bit of bulk and really what I did that originally for with this bulk was more than anything I didn't like looking at that hook either and so I came in here and I just kind of make a yellow transition I come to the middle of this keel right here and anchor it off then we're going to take same thing we're just going to keep taking stacks and this is why 
the fly is so incredibly light. You're not, there's just nothing to it. And, and the thing, and the beauty of that is, is when this thing starts swimming, this hair is so light, there's no bulk built into it. It just, you'll see it, it just undulates in the water. But we don't need, you don't need a lot. Maybe a, I'm cleaning this out, I don't know, maybe a half of a pencil width or whatever. And then we just want to make, try to keep these things to be about the same length. Now, it doesn't have to be exact, it's not, a, it's not that complicated. So this one here, I'm going to take, and I'm going to cut this at an angle. I'm going to cut it, this, the only time I do this, I'm going to cut it this way. I'm going to come underneath here, and I'm going to push that hair right in. And you can see there's hair on the back side, and there's hair on the front side. I just split that hook is all I did. I came in the bottom, and I'm going to catch that hair right there, and let it work right through. You just, I just got, I've got three turns around it. See how it lays right in there? And I'm going to come in. I, I like that in the middle. That was a little bit. I pulled a little bit up. And then I'm just going to wrap that, letting the hair on both sides wrap around the hook, come in here, and we're going to look for a little bit of a gap. Not, you can see right here, not a lot of gap, just enough. Come right here, do that all over again. I still, I clean this hair out because it, even though this isn't body hair, you still get a, I, I like to, I pinch the hair generally somewhere in the, the front third of all the hair and pull those little short ones that are just, they're, they're just going to build bulk in your fly. What you want is all these fly, these uh, hairs to be swimming by themselves without any bulk in there stopping it. So now you can flip that upside down and cut it at an angle. You do the same thing. Push down on your hook right here. Just get get one or two turns. Let it build around the hook. Let it the wrap around the shank of the hook and then just nice and tight and, and we're going to have a really big head on this fly we're going to and so i'm going to start now i'm going to start wrapping <clears throat> okay so we're going to have a gigantor head on this thing and so because i don't like this and you could do you could stop you could do one more i'm, I'm going to do one more turn on here i like to take just a small filler piece right now and go, and I only do this for a little bit of build over the back of this thing. You could be done. You could, you could, you could just put the, the marabou on here right now and be done with it. But I, I just basically, when I look at these, I usually, you can see how it's building out here. And you're getting a nice broad profile. <clears throat> I usually look at this thing and, and, and I don't have a set. I, I'll say, I usually do three, sometimes four. I just look at it and say, you know, every day is different. And I want a little bit more hair on it, and I just split it and put a little bit more. If I don't think I need it, I don't. But part of that was to cover this. But part of it's also I wanted a big head. I wanted a, a, a bigger wedge head with that. And so when I started doing them, I put this on here, and I didn't really see it change much as far as bulk, but it gave me a steeper head, so I built a little bit bigger head a little faster because... It built. It, it takes a while to build this up, and I'm using. By the way, I didn't mention. I'm using 50 GSP uh, thread. I was tying those uh, perch patterns earlier, and that's what I use on those. And so that's what that was. And I like yellow thread. I like. I just like keep it. Keep it the same. Now I'm going to look at this and say, okay. I'm going to. You know, just because my head's not built that big, I'm going to give it just. And this is just you looking at it. You, you, man, we could stop right now so easy. But we're going to look at this. And so I'm going to cut just, just to, I'm trying to build this head a little bit. That's all I'm doing. See, it now I've taken it to a third of what I used before. After you've tied a handful of them, you can, you can uh, figure out what you want. By the way, back in the day, uh, when we used to tie a lot of bucktail stuff, there used to be a fly called the tricolored bucktail. I have one uh, close. A guy gave me this summer, last summer, Scott uh, Gabrick. And I'm not, these are just different. He saw me tying something about tradition, my squirrel tail. And so he dropped me off some of these. These things are gorgeous, right? But 
you can see there, so this is kind of like the original tricolor bucktail. Actually, it's got a little squirrel in it, but it's got three different colors stacked. You can do that same thing with this fly, especially in the smaller ones. When you looked at this thing here that I had, that was, this is a three colored fly here, This, even though it's a kind of an extendo body job. And that's what Walt's was too, is originally was that. So now we're done. I, I'm, like I said, I'm just building. You don't have to put that third and whatever. You could have left it completely without any of this on it. You could have, you can go with the three or four stacks and be done. Now I'm going to give it. And I used to use I used to use a, sometimes I would use a different color on this, trying to give it a different throat. I'd use orange on it sometimes, but. I still, I've said it about 15 times now, I don't think you can, I don't think you can improve on the just straight yellow period. It's just, it, you don't need anything but this. I don't even think you need this, it just cleans it up. So now I'm going to build this head. And one of the beauties of the new, with the new, uh, UV stuff is you can you don't have to build it all with your thread. I'm just building it up right now. Just looking, looking, making sure everything's where I want it before I finish it. Uh, now I used to put I used to put. A black eye on there. I just take a, a sharpie and put a black eye on there. I'm not going to do it today. If you want to do it, do it. Um, but like I said, <clears throat> this is a great. And now we could put a. We could UV this thing, and you could build this head really quick. We could do it with uh, just regular lacquer. You can do both. I'm going to just. I actually knocked my lacquer over and dried it all out. But we're going to just to get it going here and set. We'll put a little water base on it. What's that in there? Get out of there. As I've said many times, I can't stand a head, a fly with its head not finished. It just drives me out of my mind. So this fly is just absolutely, you saw how fast that went. You, could, you, can, you can build a lot of flies in a hurry. It just sits like this. If you want it to ride like this upside down, it'll, it'll, it'll actually do that on its own, depending on how much hair you put on it. But if you want it to ride totally weedless and turn it upside down, just put 10 turns 025 on there, maybe 15 on a big hook, and it'll ride upside down just like that. But because these new keels or these new uh, belly bumper hooks, unlike the old the old style that had the horizontal, these are vertical so that you, your eye, no matter which way it goes, that you're going to be able to tie in. It's going to keel off the way it's supposed to. But that is the original stacked blonde. This fly, and again, here's the, there's about a hundred morphs of this thing on my table right now. This one just has the deceiver tails. Move that over. I don't know if I took you out of You're good. Cop right there. Uh, th this is just lengthening it out a little bit. And, you know, all the belly bumpers, you can see they're just, they're just morphs of this fly. So it's, it's really, really simple to do. Uh, I mean, I really, I was having such a blast today tying these perch. This is a morph. It's kind of a half-ass belly bumper, half-ass stack blonde, and so there's all the all the, the bucktails underneath this. It's got an eye, and it's all dialed up, trying to be a perch. But uh, honestly, I, I don't think you can outfish this thing. I I have never I, I I've never been on a river when I don't have one of these with me because it's just so. And the other thing about it, like I said earlier, it's so damn light. You can throw this thing. You don't even know you got a fly on, and that's a big. You take a fly with that much profile, that should work you. That should work you. That should be eight weight world. You can throw these things on a six weight all day. You don't even feel them. But I've had great success with this thing. And again, it's a tribute. It's not my fly. It's originally Joe Brooks Platinum Blonde or Honey Blonde or Argentine Blonde. He had a bunch of colors he used it with. Uh, and it's been, and then I stole, like I said, the stacking mechanism that I use here to from Walt Grau. But it's a it's a super fast fly. It's super easy to tie. Great for learning thread control and beginning tires. Uh, you can't tie it wrong, so it's, it's going to catch fish. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.